The Coach Kevin McMillan Show is brought to you by BSN Sports. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Brinkley with Coach Kevin McMillan on the UT Martin Coach Kevin McMillan Show. We're talking women's basketball. The team winning two games this past week, one over SAU Edwardsville, one over Eastern Illinois. Coach, before we talk about the game specifically, your team is at triple digits three times in a row, four of the last five games, and five times this season. That's a lot of offense. That's a lot of points, and uh, it takes a lot of people to contribute for that, and I think that uh, our young ones are, are starting to play better and starting to kind of figure out what they need to do to help us, and I think that's uh, attributing a lot to the points. Your shooting percentages have been high. Plus, you've been pressing a lot, and when you press, you get more possessions, which gives you a chance to score more points. I think the more possessions is, is a big deal, but the shooting percentage is also another one, uh, and I think you factor all that in, and uh, you're seeing a lot of scoring. Uh, and, and the good thing is it's coming from a lot of different positions and a lot of different ages and a lot of different players, and uh, you know, anytime you can get six kids in double figures, in double figures uh, you know, it bodes well for you. And, Anytime Butler and Newsom are, are getting 12 and 15 and are your third and fourth leading scorers, you right. got to really feel good about that. Alex and I from Sports Information were talking, um, I don't know if last season, I guess Butler or Newsom led your team in scoring every single game and probably in their junior or sophomore and freshman season also. That's not always been the case this year. Yeah, there's there's more weapons uh, and, and we've got more kids that are taking advantage of Butler and Newsom being out there uh, and that you can – you can get some good looks with those guys on the floor because they garner so much attention. Uh, and, you know, Aza Jones is doing a good job, and Katie Schubert has done well, and Shay Cross. And, you know, everybody's, uh, you know, trying to figure out to Eric Caldwell, Elizabeth Massingale, ways that they can contribute. And uh, when they do, we look really good. And when they don't, we're very mediocre. Also, we've talked a little bit about how you know, peer pressure can be a negative thing or a positive thing. Everybody seems to be stepping up a little bit at the same time. Well, what you see is when, when someone starts to play well, it kind of sends a message to everybody else that either I need to start playing well or you need to start playing worse. And uh, if somebody likes that they played well, then that bodes well for the rest of the team, uh, for us as coaches, because that means everybody else has got to step up to that level. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're seeing a little bit of that from Asia and Shea right now and that uh, everybody else is having to make a decision. Do I want to play at that level or do I want to just kind of sit back and – uh, Any time that you can get some kids to kind of start playing towards their potential, it's uh, it's going to do well for you. Are you more likely to take a player out of a game if, for a defensive mistake or an offensive mistake? Uh, probably an effort mistake is what I'm going to take them out with first, or a not paying attention mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, mm, usually probably defense because defense has more to do with effort. Yeah. Uh, but offense is more having to do with mental effort, so it's kind of a coin flip. Coach, let's go back to the SAU Edwardsville game. You start Shea Warfield Cross. She has 10 rebounds, 9 points, 4 assists, and 3 steals. That's a Jasmine like game with a little bit of everything in the stat column. It really is. And, and I, would have, I would have liked to have seen her do a little more in the second half. She did almost all of that in the first half, which was amazing. Uh, but that's a great game for her right now. Uh, she's really starting to figure out what to do to help this basketball team. And, uh, she still hadn't quite figured out offensively where to be and how to keep things flowing smoothly, but defensively and effort, which is what an assist are going to starting to contribute and starting to get more confidence in herself. And she plays hard. Um, and as long as she'll keep doing that, I think you're going to see her get better and better. I mean, she's a much better player now than she was at the beginning. Oh, not even the same person mm -hmm. almost. No. And then Elizabeth Massengill scores 17. Uh, Shea started where she's six for six from the field, three for three from the free throw line, two for two uh, from three-point range, and ended up with a nice game of 17 points. She, and that's what, that's what we're expecting out of Elizabeth is because she can do that. And she scored in, I mean, she had two threes, she had two jump shots, she had uh, an and one on a layup, she had another layup, and had two free throws. I mean, she scored just about every way possible, uh, which is what we need her to do. And she's, she's kind of... You know, she's kind of like the groundhog coming next week. She pokes her head out and says, oh, I think I'm going to. Eh, no, I think I may stick my head back in there. And so we really need her to uh, to put her game on that level uh, if we're going to be as good as we want to be. And that was after missing two games with the leg injury. He had come back and, and uh, that first game. First game of the SAU. First game back? First game back. Okay, yeah. well, good. And, uh, and you know, hopefully – you're going to see that continue. I didn't think she had as good a game the next game, but uh, but that was a really good game for her and, and nice to see her 
you know, with 17 points and six for, I mean, she didn't miss a shot. Right. Uh, and, uh, and got some rebounds and some assists and some steals and, you know, and, uh, and we're, we're needing big things from her. 72, the final. Uh, with these two games, the SAU Edwardsville and the Eastern Illinois game, uh, a couple teams with a lot of size and teams that like to slow down the pace, and you were wondering how your team would react against those. Yeah, we, we knew that both teams this over this weekend were going to try to pound us inside and that we were going to try to speed the game up so that that wasn't going to be as big of a factor. And uh, and I thought uh, that we did okay in both games, uh, not not just out of this world, but we did a pretty good job in both games. I thought the first 12 minutes of the Eastern Illinois game was very good. I mean, we were up 46-23 uh, to 23, uh, or somewhere around there and playing really, really well. But then at, at that point, I thought we kind of just got – uh, coasted in basically mm -hmm. for the last 28 minutes, which is kind of crazy when uh, when you're gonna you know the game is gonna be fast. You can't really coast in at all. But uh, you know the first 12 minutes were really good, really good. You led by 23 uh, over Eastern Illinois at 3:40. Where it was what I thought was nice is I think on the first your first four baskets were from four different players, and Jasmine did not shoot a lot early in the Eastern Illinois game. Yeah, I think Jasmine just you know she was kind of looked like early she was just kind of out there uh, and uh, but fortunately everybody else was contributing I thought uh, I thought kind of the, one of the plays of the first half that kind of dictated how well we were doing was when uh, they were playing a uh, triangle two again which is what we're we're kind of used to seeing it and uh, the ball went from Jasmine to Butler to Katie to Elizabeth to Caldwell uh, and it just went bang, 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 bang for a layup. And, uh, and I thought, okay, now if we're going to start doing that, that looks really good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we kind of took off, but then we kind of settled down and just did whatever after that. But, you know, they shot the ball really well, uh, 60%. Yeah, how does a team shoot 60% and, and lose 80, 103 to 84? Well, they turned it over 26 yeah. times, uh, and, uh, and we shot 57%. So, you know, if, if we can figure out how to cut down the shooting percentage of the other team, we that's we can be a great basketball team, and that's what we're trying to do. And you know, you and I've talked about it. We're looking through the lenses of being a great team, and uh, a lot of people are just content with being good, and we're trying to put ourselves on another level. Asia with a career high in the game. Katie Schubert had a career high, and Heather Butler had a career high in assists with nine assists. So, uh, although I mean, that just tells me that your players are doing different things. We are. Uh, the disappointing thing about Asia's game is that she had 27 points and no rebounds. Yeah. And she's, you know, and she's not a point inside. guard. No, she's not. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll argue with her and say, look, Butler had 28 points and four rebounds. I mean, she's 5'3". Go get a rebound. Uh, but she did. She did a great job. And, uh, and I thought Katie did an excellent job of, of finding open shots. I mean, Katie's numbers, five for seven from the field, 15 points, two rebounds, five assists, no turnovers. I mean, it's just she's so solid. Uh, but we need her to have those kind of nights. If they're going to leave her open, then uh, she's got to knock shots down. And I thought Asia, one of the key points in the second half where I thought you saw uh, a little bit of what these kids will be able to do in the future was mm -hmm. that we got the ball inside to Asia, who started to take advantage of, of, uh, of the post, and, and Katie's player doubled down. Well, Asia just kicked it to her, and Katie makes a shot. And it's, just, it's just in rhythm. And, uh, that's the kind of plays that Asia was not making at the beginning of the year. Also in the game, saw her make a little baseline jumper, and you have been saying at times she could play the four instead of the five. I mean, she's got that potential. We're hoping that she can play the three uh, yeah. because she would be such a mismatch if we could ever get her to the three. And she's an okay three-point shooter. I mean, we put her out there in practice and let her work on it, and she's okay, and it's not it's not broken. And uh, you know, so I think I think she's got such a great upside. Uh, that you really don't know what that kid's going to be able to do. So we, we kind of saw that with Shelby Crawford last year who would step out and shoot yep. the threesome. Same kind of yeah. thing. And yeah. uh, Asia's just got such a scores mentality that, uh, you know, if, if you can get somebody like that who learns how to score inside and you can make them score from 15 feet, they just become so much more effective. Coach, in the game, as you said, 26 turnovers. That's five games this season. You forced 20 or more, and twice you've had 30 or more turnovers. Uh, when you made the decision to, to start pressing, it certainly has made a difference with our team. It has, and I, and I thought uh, up until the or, or through the 12 minute mark that we have been playing really hard, uh, and and I think that the press has kind of it, it forces you to play hard because y your your weaknesses are just so glaring if you don't play hard. And uh, for that, for probably two or three games plus 12 minutes, I've I've been very impressed with how hard we've been playing, and you know hopefully uh, that we will 
continue and, and even try to put it on another level. Skyhawks get the win, 103 to 84. Coach, I have to tell you, at one point in the game, I took the headset off from doing a radio broadcast and just looked around. And one of the things that you wanted to do when you first came here was to really get a good atmosphere going on at the Elam Center. And we had Julie Hill with the percussion band, uh, Indiana Fever head coach, Lynn Dunn was watching the game. Eastern Illinois coach played in the WNBA, they had an assistant coach, almost 2,000 people screaming, you're on a 100 point pace. I thought, you know, this, and, it, and the wind chills below zero outside. This is a really nice night to watch a good Ohio Valley Conference matchup. It, it, you don't know what your fans, you know, Coach Russell made a comment, uh, and I wish he hadn't, when we got up 20 early, and then, and then he said the crowd kind of has gotten bored. You know, it, and you don't want that to happen, but, but I understood what he was saying. And, uh, but we, we've, we've, got the, we've got the best crowds in the conference. That's not even close. You know, when we travel around, we've got the best fans in the conference. And uh, we're trying to put a product out there that they want to come watch, and uh, even if it's awful outside because I mean, it's just way too cold. But uh, it, it is. We're, we're, we're getting some attention from some folks that, uh, that like women's basketball in the area. And, uh, we're, we're just trying, Chris, to make women's basketball in West Tennessee's big, mm -hmm. and it's always been big, and we're just trying to continue that tradition. And uh, we've got such a loyal, great fan base, and, and, our, and our players are so good about, uh, I mean, they're so genuine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when they talk to you, they, they go up in the crowd after the games. I mean, they're not being fake. Uh, they're, they are genuinely happy that uh, people are coming to watch them, and it's great to see. I want to talk about that because a lot of our fans may not realize this, but you're, I guess you're the only coach I know that allows your players, when the game is over, to instead of go to the locker room and listen to you for 20 minutes, they go in the stands and visit with their families and with the fans. Well, I think it's important that they have the interaction with the fans, and, uh, and I'm sure they probably have routines now and people that they go see all the time, but I hope that they branch out and, and we'll talk to uh, a lot more people. But, I mean, I, the the – Fans came to watch the kids play, and mm -hmm. so I think it's if they if they have a chance to talk to them after the game, I think that'd be really neat. And and a lot of times I don't know, you know, we've got some kids that uh, are from Ohio, Indiana, and their fam their families have come down for the game. And a lot of times I don't know if they have time to stay around before they have to head back home. And so I right. at least want them to to get to say something. Uh, and I don't try to keep them very long so they can get back to their families. But I just think it's... I don't even know. Do you have a rule? Do they, have to, do they all go in a locker room at the same time? When do you talk to them about the game? Uh, after, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you on the radio and, and, and do the television. And then I just kind of patient uh, and, and let them... They, they know that a reasonable amount of time, 15 minutes. So, I mean, we don't have a clock on them. We're not doing anything. And... They just come up here as they as they finish with their families, and if somebody has to wait a little longer, we just we'll wait a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Okay, we'll take a break. We'll come back and talk about the games coming up this week on the road with Coach Kevin McMillan on the UT Martin Skyhawk Sports Network. At this time, we would like to thank our basketball corporate donors: Carry Insurance, Dynamix. Parker Hannafin, State Farm, Surgical Associates of Martin, Vans Institutional Pharmacy, Walmart. Back with Coach Kevin McMillan on the Kevin McMillan Show. Coach, a couple notes when I was looking at the, the stats. Uh, Asia was averaging 10 point. Well, she's averaging 17 points a game in Ohio Valley Conference play. Uh, in the non-conference schedule, she was facing much larger opponents. And we we faced face some big post players in the OVC, but she's really stepped up her game once she's entered conference play. And I think that if she could go back and play those first 13 games again, that she'd see a lot more points. She's figured out now how to score. Mm -hmm. And she can do it on a lot bigger players. And so I think that that is just a factor of her kind of figuring it out. Uh, because we'll, we'll throw the ball now against anybody and, and expect her to figure out how to go score. And, and she's done a great job with it, but uh, but her numbers have gone dramatically higher in the conference play. And another thought is, you're 9-0 in conference play. And I heard Hubie Brown on an NBA broadcast the other day that say, said that the mark of a good team is point differential. 
and that if you looked at the top six teams in the NBA right now, they're averaging eight more points or seven more points than their opponents. In conference play, you're plus 21 point that you're winning games by 20 plus. Uh, that's a fantastic thing. That's also got to make you a little nervous that your team might become complacent. Well, and, and that's we're trying to push them uh, to not not look at the scoreboard uh, and keep playing the whole time. Uh, I mean, that's an, an unbelievable. And that includes the Murray game you won by one. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you, you want you, all we want from our players, and it's not. It's not rocket science. It's all we want them to do is the game is 40 minutes long. So we want to play our best basketball for 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And don't look at the scoreboard. Don't, don't, don't look at who's out there with you. Don't look at who's not out there with you. Don't look at who the other team has. You play every possession to the best of your ability, every one. And then at the end, we'll add up all those and see how we did. If you start looking at the scoreboard or you start thinking about this or that or the other, you take your focus off what you're supposed to, and that's when the game starts becoming a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, for us, it's very, very simple. Every single possession, offensive, defensive, out-of-bounds plays, every little thing on the floor, a box out, a screen, you're supposed to handle those things to the best of your ability. And what I'm having to do is keep pushing them because they'll get up a, a lead and then they'll kind of relax and they won't worry about the screen or they won't worry about a box out. You know what, Coach, we're up 20. What does one box out matter? Well, okay, it may not matter in that game, but it's going to matter at some point. And if you get to the point where you're picking and choosing, I can pick on the officials now. When the officials pick and choose which one to call, it's a hard game to, to play or coach or watch. When they're consistent and they do it all the time, life's good. And so it's the same concept. Guys, don't ever pick and choose which one you think is important. Just do every one of them. That way you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to decide, well, is this one more important than that one or whatever. Because a lot of us will try and say, okay, we're in the championship game, so now let's play our best. Mm -hmm. If you're not used to playing your best every single game, I mean, you you know, you might get lucky. Uh, it's just like going and playing disc golf. If you go out there and you play against somebody that's really, really, really good, you say, okay, now I'm going to play my best today. What are the odds you play your best on the day that you want to play your best against the best competition? Right. It's not there. Right. But if you if you concentrate every single day on every single shot, doing every little thing right, then the best and the championships will take care of themselves. And, and that's what we're trying to keep up. You focus. know, another thought on that too is coaches always if it, if you lose on the last shot at the end of the game, you know, maybe, maybe that is that possession more important than the fourth possession of the game? No, when you it's turn not. It over? It's not. And. And that's why we keep hammering them on every little thing, every out-of-bounds play, every time that we sub and we're, do we all get matched up. I mean, there's every little detail we say. We don't ask you to be perfect. Just do the, give the best effort you can give every single time. And so if you go out there and you don't know who you're matched up to, effort. Uh, if you go out there and miss a shot, well, it might have been your best effort. That may be okay if we screened and we cut and made a good pass. We can live with a missed shot, mm -hmm. but we can't live with a missed shot if everybody did everything right and got you the ball for a layup and you weren't paying attention and you miss a layup. No, that's not. Now we're not. That's not your best effort. Give us your best effort, and it's such a subjective thing too, because the kids a lot of times think that their best effort is you know here, and I'm going to uh, it's here, and I have to push them to keep trying to be at their best, and it and it's hard, and it's and it's and it's really hard when they may build a lead and think they can relax. Mm -hmm. And especially if that's what they're accustomed to doing. Well, that pushing has certainly made a difference. We've seen Heather and Jasmine become better each year, and they were pretty good their freshman season. They are better every year. Because I, mean, I, mean, I asked you after their freshman year, can they be better? And you said, of course, Chris, they can be better. I thought, yeah, I mean, they're pretty good already. But no, they've even to go from the junior to senior season, what's amazing, Coach, is that they've got a bigger target on their back now than they've ever had. They do. And the thing that I'm hoping that they can do finishing this season out is they they can get better offensively, defensively, all that. But it's, so, it's going to be so minute for us to see. We probably won't even be able to see it. The thing that they can do is what you're starting to see now is influence other people to start doing some of the things. And, and that's a mark of a true leader, champion, best, whatever you want to say. When you can get everyone else to do it, now you're something really special. Because anybody can go out and do it themselves. Right. But do you have that quality in you, which there are not many that do, 
Can you have, do you have that quality that you can make everyone else around you want to do that too? That's when you're something really special, and those two can do that. And you're talking about you know, emotionally, but even Butler's nine assists, which is a, to have a career high in assists late in your senior season tells you something about that. That tells you what she's focusing on. And Jasmine not scoring many points in that game. Again, that tells you. Jasmine doesn't score as much as she usually does, and Butler gets a career high in assists, and we score over 100 points. That tells you what those guys are trying to get accomplished here as we head down the stretch. Okay, Coach, you have two games coming up. Actually, you have, uh, after the Eastern Illinois game, you, you go six days without playing before playing on a Monday. How nice is that break for your team at this point in the season? Well, it's really good. A little bit of sickness is going around, mm -hmm. so it's really good now that we've got a little bit of a break. Uh, we'll have a couple of days off between the two games, which, again, st really actually starting this week is when we start cutting things back. So it's good that we've got a little bit of a break here. Uh, now, you, you don't like it when you're starting to play pretty good. Mm -hmm. You, you want to keep keep playing to keep your uh, keep your momentum going. But uh, it'll be very good for us to have a little break this week, and then we head off to Eastern Kentucky on Sunday. We play Monday, uh, and that'll be a big game for us. Yeah, you have Eastern Kentucky. That is a big game, a very talented team. They've also got one of the conference's leading scorers. On yeah, Marie Carpenter is really, really good. And, uh you know, she's one of the kids that it came down between us and Eastern Kentucky, and we wish we'd gotten her because yeah. she can play. And then you have uh, SIU Edwardsville on the schedule after that, a team that you saw not too long ago here at the Elam Center. Right, and I don't, I don't like that scheduling. Uh, again, I think, I think Ben may have been, done the scheduling when he was asleep one night because <laughs> it doesn't make sense that you would play one team twice in, in, in three or four games, and, and it happens more than once, and not just to us. It happens to a lot of teams. Okay, that's uh, the game's coming up. Go to utmsports.com for all the information on the scheduling. That's Coach Kevin McMillan. I'm Chris Brinkley. Thanks for tuning in, and so long, everybody. The Coach Kevin McMillan Show is brought to you by BSN Sports. Thank you for your support of UT Martin Basketball.